All right. Um, the recording is on, and uh, we can uh, get into our session for today. We'll pray and uh, begin. So I request somebody from the online batch to please go ahead and pray today. Who would like to lead? Heavenly Father, we just wish to thank you for this uh, hour of uh, study. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, as you guide us through these lessons, Lord, that we will be open to learn from you and uh, be able to retain whatever we've studied, Father. We pray, Father, that uh, as uh, we continue to learn, Lord, that we will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, Lord, and be able to apply whatever we've learned in our day-to-day -day lives, Father. We pray for blessing upon all the teachers and the students, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Sanjay. We'll get to our notes. And uh, today, I thought we would take up chapter 18. There are some more chapters before that, but we'll go to it later when we are uh, because the subject that we need to be doing today is to pray for the city but i'll club it with praying for revival and uh, also i mean there's another subject about praying in a group so we'll club all that together and we'll study it but right now we'll take up the subject of fasting so prayer with fasting so it's a really, really interesting subject. And uh, I'm sure many of us want to understand why, why do we fast and what is the meaning of uh, fasting? How is fasting clubbed with prayer essential and important? What kind of impact it has on our lives? So that is the subject for today. We'll study about fasting and prayer. So there, uh, there's a lot of information in the chapter. Uh, I'll try to summarize it section by section. So our primary passage will be from Isaiah 58. So I request us to open our Bibles to Isaiah 58. We will go to that passage later, and we will study through the entire passage. But before that, uh, let's just have a little bit of background regarding fasting so very similar to prayer we look at fasting as a spiritual discipline prayer is relationship with god and at the same time we practice it like a discipline remember we said that we need a strictly regimented or a, a, like a sort of a planned scheduled way of praying we can be spontaneous or we can pray whenever we like but usually if we have set times of prayer it helps us to be more disciplined so in the same way fasting uh, is a spiritual discipline something that we practice regularly that will help us in our spiritual walk fasting um, is it important to fast now that jesus has you know died on the cross he has given us salvation um, you know, we are, you know, blessed. Why should we fast? Is it necessary for believers to fast? What is your view? Yes, sister. Okay, yes. Um, over here also, uh, people are saying yes. So it is necessary for us to fast. Jesus talked about fasting. Okay, we'll we'll see uh, later on when he instructed his uh, disciples. He he said, when you fast, fast like this. So he gave instructions. And also, uh, he pointed out that when he is gone or he is taken up, uh, at that time, the disciples who follow him will fast. So this is something that has been given to the church or to the believers to do. So fasting is a part of our uh, walk with the Lord. It's not that, you know, as believers, we, we can say um, Jesus has already done everything on the cross. So uh, there's no more need to fast. 
Okay, so we don't say that because Jesus himself talked about fasting. What is the right way to fast? And he also said that believers will fast when he, um, uh, he is not yet not on the earth. So fasting is essential for believers. But um, the important thing to understand is there is the correct way or proper way to do fasting. So we can do fasting. But if we do it um, the wrong way, it won't be that effective. Okay, so we need to understand the correct way or the proper way of fasting. That is what we will uh, study from Isaiah 54 very soon. Now, regarding fasting, we also observe that there are um, different ways of fasting. So, staying away from food, uh, it could be only partial meaning some meals we don't eat or uh, you know some particular food we don't eat for the sake of prayer we don't eat or it can be absolute absolute means completely we don't eat anything all the meals you know we are skipping so that is absolute we can either have partial fasting or we can uh, practice what is known as absolute or complete fasting now we can fast as individuals, meaning each one of us we can fast by ourselves or we can fast fast as a group, two or three people, you want to pray about a subject, so you get together, you fast and pray. So fasting and prayer can be done either way. We can fast for uh, any length of time. So in the Bible we observe different kinds of um, uh, you know timelines uh, fasting can be done for one day okay you see examples of that it's uh, all there in the notes i'm not going verse by verse because there are lots and lots of verses so it can be for one day or <coughs> it can be three days like esther we find three days uh, she fasted then uh, seven days uh, is an, is also given in in the bible 14 days uh, 21 days, Daniel fasted 21 days, 40 days, uh, you know, you find even Jesus, he fasted 40 days. So there are different days that one can choose to fast. Now, how do we choose these um, timelines and what exactly to fast? It depends on how God is leading us and, uh, you know, how we really want to seek him. So it depends on those things. Now, why are we talking about fasting? We already know that we are saved by grace and uh, we can't do good works to buy our salvation, isn't it? Uh, Jesus has done his work on the cross. That is why uh, we have the blessings that we have. So just because we do the right things, it doesn't sort of um, we're not trying to do it to get god's attention or uh, a reward from god you got it but the bible does say that when we walk righteously we are blessed because there are results and blessings associated with the right doing the right things so one thing we have to understand is fasting is not to get extra points you know if i may put it that way from god so if I fast, God will be so impressed with me that he will give me what I'm asking him for. So it's not like that. But fasting has its benefits. We have to understand what are these benefits that we get when we fast. So some of them are, it is a very helpful way to express our repentance or when we feel sorry about something. Right? Uh, we can fast before God. Maybe we should not have done something and we did it. Or uh, we didn't make the right decision. Um, and we feel like, oh, I, I need to repent. I need to say sorry to God. Fasting is a very good way that helps us express our repentance. Okay, It's very helpful that we can come before God and set our heart right in his presence. So we can take up fasting whenever we want to express our repentance. Then how else does fasting help? Fasting will help us to uh, strengthen 
our focus. So let's say I'm my spiritual focus or attention. It's not, um, you know, I'm a very distracted person. Like I'm not able to concentrate uh, on the things of God. But if we start practicing fasting, then we will begin to see that our focus becomes very sharp. Spiritual focus becomes very strong. It becomes very sharp. So fasting has that ability. Okay. So uh, someone said that, um, you know, uh, uh, in, in, the, in life and uh, even our flesh, right, we find many things that try to pull us. Or in other words, you can put it like this, the noise, the noise of the world, the noise of the flesh, everything wants to get our attention, right? So we become distracted. We don't know where to pay attention. But when we fast, what happens is we become so we become stronger and we don't get attracted by the world or we don't get attracted to the noises of our flesh. Like our flesh wants, you know, um, pleasure and uh, approval, so many things, the wrong things that our flesh wants. But when we fast, we develop a focus where we are able to shut down the noise. Okay, so primarily that's what fasting does for us. It will help us to shut down all the noise around us. And we can uh, get intensely focused on the things of God. So are you all understanding what I'm trying to say? If you have questions, you can always ask me. So it helps us to focus. It also helps us become very intense in our desire for God. You know, we say, right, that love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, uh, uh, with all your mind, with all your strength. Now, we may have a level of love for God, but when we practice fasting, it can intensify. Our desire for God can become deeper. It can become stronger. Okay, so if we want to love God more, through fasting, we can develop the intensity to love Him. Okay, so it really helps in that way. Fasting also helps us develop discipline. How many of you can agree with me that uh, fasting is very hard? It's very difficult. Anybody here, you feel fasting is very easy. For me, it's very easy. Anyone like that can show us your hand. Oh, well, we have one person here who feels fasting is easy. Okay. But in general, I think for most of us, fasting is difficult. Okay. Very honestly. So when we get into something like fasting, it disciplines us because we have to say no to the desire of our flesh. We have to say no to comforts. We have to say no, you know, uh, to many things. Only then we can fast successfully. And uh, when we do that, uh, it pushes us and we become more and more disciplined, right? And we know that the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So in the fruit of the Spirit, one aspect is uh, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, right? In that list, you'll also find self-control. So when the Holy Spirit is working in our lives, uh, at, we have to grow in self-control. That is also a fruit of the Spirit. Fasting will help us become more self-controlled, right? In our emotions, in everything. We become more self-controlled, we become more disciplined, and therefore we can display the fruit of the Spirit. It deepens consecration. See, consecration means submission, surrender. So uh, maybe there are times when we want to express our surrender to God. We are saying, God, I'm committing my life to you. I'm committing my life for the ministry. Right? So when we are committing, when we are surrendering, when we are submitting, a time of fasting helps. Because we, when we are fasting, we are saying, God, um, I'm making myself an offering to you. So that is consecration or dedication. So it helps us dedicate ourselves to God. So these are all the benefits of 
fasting okay so uh, a good thing to do is always think about what is the benefit when you're doing something hard think of what is going to be the result if the results are good it is worth going through the struggle of uh, whatever it is you know fasting or uh, you know uh, disciplining our selves so these are the benefits it's really helping us understand that we can become very focused on god we can develop godly lives if we practice fasting okay so this is the benefit or this is the advantage now what are some of the things that we can fast what do what can we fast usually what do people fast <laughs> food isn't it we let go of food we don't uh, uh, eat certain foods or we don't eat uh, certain meals uh, for some days or a long period of time food is generally what people fast okay uh, but we can also fast things that we like for example you know these days uh, people spend more time on social media they spend more time on the phone um, you know more time maybe watching movies more time in sports so when we feel like we are giving more time to other things and not to god we can also discipline ourselves by saying i will take the time which i am using for let's say social media or tv or movies or sports or going out i'll put that time for prayer i'll put that time for study of god's word so uh, one is we can fast food but we can also fast the activities which we like you got it so we can decide maybe for um, if i like something a lot i'm saying okay god i'm going to keep that away for whatever you know one month two months or six months i won't i will just give my time to you that is also a kind of fasting which we can undertake and uh, believe me it's not easy for our generation uh, letting go of the whatever instagram facebook it's very hard it's as good as fasting a meal because people are so addicted right to leave it uh, they they find it difficult so we can also fast activities apart from food so the decision is ours what is it that has your attention for some people maybe fasting that activity will be more beneficial than skipping a meal because their heart is fully in that activity so we have to decide what is it that i need to fast in this season but yes generally food because um, there are many examples about fasting food in the bible now apart from this there is also something known as a fasted life okay a fasted life so that doesn't mean that somebody is not eating at all it's not possible right if you don't eat at all you won't exist so fasted life is it's not referring only to eating but it's referring to a dedicated life dedicated life to god so the fasted life comes from the example in the old testament there was a group of people known as nazrites uh, do you know samson samson in the bible he was a nazrite so they would dedicate people to god and that person was supposed to avoid many things because their life was dedicated to god so you know samson he shouldn't cut his hair he shouldn't drink um, you know intoxicated drinks so those kind of there were many rules that the nazarites had to follow because their life was a dedicated life so uh, uh, samson is nazarite samuel in the bible nazarite even jesus uh, you know is part of that nazarite uh, community so from that example today you know, maybe for us dedication to god does not mean okay you know you should cut your hair not cut your hair or you know things like that but dedication to god through your life can be uh, a commitment that you make 
you can make your own decisions and say okay i will do this i will not do this you make your own decisions and throughout your life you because our life is dedicated to god we choose to sacrifice and we live our whole life that's nazrite it's like a nazrite vow so um we call it fasted life so our whole life itself can be fasted life because we say okay i'm going to say no to certain things throughout my life got it as my dedication to god so that also is something that we can practice and when we do that um you you would see greater strength and greater power so as i shared earlier um jesus encouraged fasting so can we read from the passage matthew chapter 9 verses 14 and 15 could someone please turn your bibles to that passage matthew chapter 9 verses 14 and 15 Yeah, please read. Then the disciples of the Lord came to the place by the sea of Galilee, and they came to the place where Jesus was crucified. He 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 was crucified. okay so do you see there the disciples of john came and asked jesus why are your disciples not fasting that time jesus said no they will fast they will fast when the bridegroom is taken away so that means right now right now jesus is not on the earth right he is in the presence of the father so this is the time that we are actually supposed to fast and pray so um the bible does not say that believers don't have to fast just the way he talked about prayer he also talks about fasting and says that fasting is for the believer and uh, there are other passages as well that really help us understand um you know that fasting is required and that um um you know fasting is um uh, something like when jesus made statements about fasting he said when you fast right we'll go to those passages when you fast he didn't say if you fast so if means what if means if you want to you fast if you don't want don't fast but he said when you fast that means we are supposed to fast whenever we fast we have to follow what he says so now let us uh, talk about what is the right way of fasting or what is the correct uh, or proper manner of fasting and that is why we um, in our in our notes there is the word the chosen fast okay the chosen fast chosen is approved or um selected selected by god see when we fast that fast has to be approved by god or it should make god happy if our fasting is not making god happy then it's not a chosen fast so we need to know what is the right way to fast so that it makes god happy So in Isaiah chapter fifty-eight, verses one through fourteen, we will study in sections about what is the way in which we should get ready to fast. Okay, the attitude that we need to carry. Second is regarding why why should we fast or the purpose for which we are fasting, uh, and what are the promises of God if we fast. what can we expect okay in our lives so let's begin with the preparation 
what does god require of us so for this we will have to look at the passages uh, isaiah 58 verse 3 and verse 4 Can I read, sister? Yes, yes, sister. Get through. Isaiah fifty-eight, verse three. Why have we fasted? They say, and you have not seen. Mm. Why have we afflicted our souls, and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and mm. exploit all your laborers. Mm. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. and to strike with the fist of wickedness you mm. will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high okay yes so sir can you read verse 5 also please yeah is it a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the lord okay so in verse 5 remember i said chosen fast so god is asking is this the fast that i have chosen or is this the fast that i have approved or is this the fast which is acceptable to me and god points out certain behaviors or attitudes that people have and um, he says that it's it's not correct the way people are fasting so he is telling uh, to the people uh, you know who were fasting at at the time when isaiah was writing for them he points out you know a couple of things so in verse 3 uh, he says that people have an attitude where they are asking god uh, why did we fast and you have not seen why have we afflicted our souls and you you take no notice that means the reason they were fasting was to impress god that was their only goal that okay god you see um you know i am hungry i left i left this i let go of that i made so many sacrifices but you are not seeing so their goal is they want to impress god they want god to understand what a big sacrifice they have done with their fasting and god says i'm sorry i'm not impressed okay that's not a good attitude with which we fast if we are fasting to say that uh, look at me you know i am so great i am sacrificing god you have to take attention and do something then that attitude is not a right attitude and god is saying um i'm not happy with this kind of an attitude when you fast what is the second thing that he sta states there he also says that when you fast you pursue your own interest and you oppress your workers so this is um, this refers to uh, there were people who were wealthy and they had servants and slaves okay now on the day of their fasting what they used to do is because they are fasting right uh then if they are fasting they are part of the work who will do what they used to do is they used to put extra work on the se servants and the slaves and they used to say see i am fasting today i can't do anything you have to do all the work so there is no concern or care for the poor or the weak people Okay, it's a very proud attitude. It's a very oppressive attitude. With that attitude, people were fasting. All these, you know, um, very wealthy people, very uh, rich people, and they were saying, "God, see, we are fasting for you." But God is saying, "But how are you fasting? You're making the people around you suffer." So obviously, all those servants and slaves, when the the fasting day. might come so they would have been so scared oh our work is going to become double and triple okay so god is observing everything and he's saying it's not right you're saying you're fasting but you're putting the load on the workers you have no compassion you have no concern for others and you're saying i'm fasting what is this attitude okay it's the wrong attitude right so that is being pointed out and the next attitude 
that um, we notice here is God says, you're doing it for your own interests. You're doing it for your own selfishness. Okay? Uh, so there is no surrender. There is no attitude of God, uh, I'm submitting myself to you. You guide me. You lead me. Nothing like that. No humility in the fasting. It's full of selfishness, selfish interest. And we want God to answer. When we fast like that, God is saying, it's not acceptable. I'm not happy. Even though we are sacrificing, God is saying it's not acceptable. What else does he say there? He also says uh, that there is strife, right? There is strife among you. So then that is pointing to a very important part of our lives, which is relationships. So in verse 4, he says, Indeed, you fast for strife and debate, and to strike with the fist of wickedness. What does it mean? It simply means our relationships are not right. You know, we are angry with people, we are upset with people, we are fighting with people, we are, you know, um, quarreling with people. There is a lot of strife. There are many relationships which are not right. And we are trying to fast. And God is saying, you go make everything right. Okay? So fasting is not just about avoiding food. God is looking at the whole life and the attitude that we carry when we come before him. Whether we are coming before him with humility, surrender, uh, and also whether we are not just respecting God, but respecting the relationships in our lives. You got it? So it's, it's beyond just food or letting go of some choice activities, right? So relationships, can you imagine? God is saying, um, you fast for strife and debate and strike with the fist of wickedness. So our whole life, even our relationships matter to God. And God says, you know, we, we shouldn't do it that way. We should do it with the uh, attitude where we set everything right. Now let's look at verse 5. There is one more aspect there that is covered. Verse 5 talks about the chosen fast. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Okay, uh, let's, let's go on. I think verse 6 we need to read. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that your, you break every yoke? So another attitude that we must carry when we fast is um, to remove burdens from people. Or it simply, if you want to understand it in the simplest way, it means to have compassion. Okay, to have compassion for people, to have compassion, especially for those who are weak, right? Those who may be weaker than us in some way, uh, we must have compassion for them. If we don't have, have a heart of compassion, God says, what fasting are you doing? Right? So these are all the attitudes that God wants us to have when we fast. And only then our fasting will be valid. Now, let us go on and let us look at, um, you know, how exactly to fast. There are some instructions. We'll read from verse 6 to verse uh, 10. Uh, can somebody read the whole thing? Verse 6 to verse 10. We'll explain that and then go on to others, other passages. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him, 
and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your life shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer you. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the, of the finger and speaking witness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall down in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noon day. Okay, so we find some instructions in between some blessings. Again, going back to some instructions. So let's look at the instructions here. Verse 6 and 7, where uh, the scripture is telling us that uh, we must lose the bonds of wickedness. Okay, Lose the bonds of wickedness means that we need to stand on the side of justice. So when we don't stand on the side of justice, then again, our fast is very empty. Okay, so we need to stand on the side of justice. That's a requirement. And uh, he also says, you must um, undo the heavy burdens. Undo the heavy burdens means we should not exploit people. Exploit people, again, goes back to how maybe those days, the people who were in leadership, they, they used to make, um, uh, how do you put it, exploit is, when you're taking advantage of the workers, uh, of the slaves. So God is saying, we need to have compassion. As a leader, have compassion for the people and don't burden them. Don't you know uh, put loads on them which they cannot carry. So it, it has to do with living a life uh, for justice. Uh, and again, you know, compassion, the fear of God. These are all the attitudes. It has more fasting has more to do with the way we think, the way uh, the, the motivation of our heart. Okay, our attitude more than I fasted 40 days, I fasted 50 days. That's fine. How, how many days we are fasting and what sacrifice we are making is good, but it is deeper than that. God is looking at the heart of the person and saying, is there justice in our heart? Is there compassion in our hearts, right? Is there the fear of God? Uh, you know, we won't treat people badly when we fear God, right? So these, these are the things that one needs to understand as far as fasting is concerned. And uh, you break every yoke. Every yoke uh, simply means you know, um, if there are debts, you know, when people owe us debts, uh, we know in the matter of uh, finances, you know, this person owes me 100 rupees, that person owes me 200 rupees, they need to give it back. Okay, you need to give it back, you need to give it back. But sometimes we hold uh, debts at an emotional level where we feel, you know, people owe us, they owe us an explanation, you know, we feel entitled where everybody else, you know, how could they behave like that? You need, you owe me an explanation. You owe me a sorry, right? So we keep people in our hearts and um, it, it's as if everybody owes us something because there is unforgiveness in our hearts. So unforgiveness again will affect the fasting which we uh, perform or which we are engaging in. So God is saying, are there debts? Cancel the debts. Okay, forgive people. Let go. Okay, fine. They made a mistake. Whatever. You come before me, settle it. Let them go. Cancel the debts. So a heart of forgiveness God is asking for when we come to him with fasting. And he also says, you know, share your food. Um, Share your bread with the hungry. Again, you know, it has to do. It's, it has a lot to do with justice, uh, heart of forgiveness, compassion. Again, compassion, right? So have compassion for the people. Uh, take care of those who are poor. Bring to your house the poor who are 
passed out so that means not only should we have a heart of compassion but be generous generous means what we are willing to give so if i have something i am willing to give help people care for people so that is necessary right as an attitude when we fast and um, he also says when you see the naked that you cover him generosity right people may not have clothes uh, this is literal but we can also take it at another level to care for people you know uh, cover their shame help them uh, so things like that when we engage with that attitude uh, we our fasting becomes pleasing to god and it also says do not hide yourself from your own flesh that means that you know we have responsibilities in our lives you know we may have parents uh, you know married people your spouse children relatives so we have all these people's relationships uh, and all so when we have these relationships and we have some responsibilities we can't just say my life is dedicated to god you take care of yourself i don't care you do whatever you want because i am living for god right what are we doing we are saying i will not take responsibility for the people that god has put in my life god doesn't want us to be irresponsible so he's saying you have a responsibility fulfill your responsibility okay don't neglect people for the sake of you know i'm a godly person i'm dedicated to god so you figure it out no do we have a responsibility to be towards our parents towards the spouse towards children fulfill your responsibilities that's what god is saying okay uh, so no excuses even with regard to that so you you see that overall when we look at where is god pointing to two things he's pointing to our heart what is the motivation behind what we are doing okay our heart second he's pointing to our relationships how are the relationships in my life are they healthy okay or am i constantly getting into trouble with people right because of whatever attitude these two things it matters a lot when we go before god in fasting so god is looking at the heart god is looking at the relationships okay and when that is correct we can engage in an effective fasting so there are some more instructions verse 9 and verse 10 he says you know take away the yoke from your midst so that simply means um you know put an end to oppression so if we are burdening people if uh, there are unfair um practices right we could have unfair practices like we can make one rule for ourselves which is very easy and we make another rule for the people who are working with us working for us which is difficult and when they try to explain no this is not correct we say no uh, you do it i don't know how you're going to do it but you do it so when we make things unfair even that god says uh, it's not pleasing in my sight and then uh, it says stop the pointing of the finger pointing of the finger is blaming blaming people so uh, we are constantly saying oh he is not right she is not right they are not right blaming people that attitude is not acceptable then it says stop speaking wickedness wickedness means when we talk about other people you know the word is gossip when we gossip or this person about their life about you know uh, different things that they are doing or not doing that is gossip and god says if we engage in gossip then again you know our uh, fasting is not acceptable uh, and extend your soul to the hungry generosity be generous to others satisfy the afflicted soul that again means generosity help somebody who is in need so when we practice all these things uh, which are to do with right motivation and right attitude right relationships then 
definitely God will accept our fasting. Okay, so suddenly fasting has become even more difficult now. First, it was just not eating food, but now it has to do with everything, right? So uh, it's kind of tough, but we can ask God, please help me, Lord, every day to walk in this way. One more last instruction to make our fasting acceptable is um, Isaiah 58 and verse 13. Can someone read it, please? Isaiah 58 and verse 13. Isaiah 58 verse 13. Mm. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly. Mm. So, what God is reminding us is, He's reminding us about the Sabbath. Okay, So, the Sabbath, um, we know that one day is set aside for the Lord. One day is set aside to honor God. One day is set aside to worship God. Right? Uh, now, as people of God, if we don't take this seriously, or Basically, it has to do with honoring God. It's not so much about, you know, which day it is. It's not that. But it's about making time for the Lord, whichever day, right, of the week. But now we know we all practice Sundays as the day when we worship God. We um, honor God on that day, right? What does uh, rest or Sabbath mean? It means that we are looking to God. So one day if we rest, if you ask people who don't believe in God, they'll say, oh, my business will go down, my profit will go down. If I work another day, I'll get more profit. But what are we saying as believers? Yeah, one day we are taking a break, but God is my provider. Right? So we are extending our faith unto the Lord. And we are saying, as I worship, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. So that one day we take to worship God, to honor God, right? So God is also saying that if we don't keep the Sabbath, that day which is designated for worship and honoring of God, even then our fasting will be affected, okay? So these are all the instructions. Apart from heart attitude, relationships, third is honoring God. If you're not honoring God with our resources, our time, then also our fasting will not be acceptable. Okay, so um, these are the instructions. When we come back, we will look at the blessings. So if we do fasting in the right way, there are going to be a lot of blessings. So we will look at that. If you have any questions, after the break, you can ask me, right? So we'll take a break, 10 minutes, and then we can come back and discuss. Thank you. Thank you.